The 350 I just plugged into over here, I pulled 24 kilowatts to start, and it tapered down nicely to 10 kilowatts. Oh, man. So then I unplugged, and I plugged into this uh, 150 over here, the Ultra, not the Hyper, but the Ultra, which isn't even supposed to be as fast, and I'm pulling a whopping 64 kilowatts right now. There's a Model 3 over there not plugged in. The guy's just sleeping in the back seat with his two dogs, and definitely had a better experience than I did at the Red Roof Inn last night. I, I thought I saw the worst charging sessions ever with the roller coaster charging sessions, 60, 150, whatever. No, Brunswick, Georgia, you just won the crown for the worst charging session I've ever seen in my life. I don't even keep track of the data now because the data is so bad. I mean, like, you put this data into an Excel spreadsheet, the Excel spreadsheet will just blow up. It'll refuse the data. It'll be like, what are you kidding me? This is bad data. It's like fake news, false data. It can't be. It's a 350, 24 kilowatts. Every single time, plug and charge just works. All right, let's see what happens here. Is it gonna do the ping pong thing? Or are we going to get a good charging session? Oh, charging session error, drive system fault, contact customer care. What? That is bizarre. Charging system error. Welcome to day two of the trip home from Florida to Connecticut. Yesterday was was not not necessarily a conventional travel day because a lot of it was the service day. Um, and that was a good day. And today is gonna be a good day, I hope, because it didn't start off great. Um, you know, waking up here at this Red Roof Inn here, wherever I am in Kingsland, Georgia, not sure I could recommend this. I think the best part about my stay is this cup of coffee and the fact that I'm leaving right now. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was just okay. So look, we've got a little bit of charge, only about a 75 mile range. I forget what state of charge I'm at. And we're gonna head up the road just, just um, not too far. Let's check out where we're gonna go. And we got a lot of miles to cover today because I need to get home tonight. So this is gonna be an interesting one. Am I gonna run into more of these, these uh, Signet sort of yo-yo roller coaster uh, charges? I have a feeling I am, and I don't really like that, but I gotta get home. So what else can I do? Let's go. Well, good morning, Bailey. How are you today, huh? Did you, did you sleep well? Huh? Come say hi. Yeah. Let's go over the trip where we're gonna go right now, okay? So we are in Kingsland, Georgia, and we're gonna be heading up to Brunswick, Georgia. There is a Walmart Supercenter, um, of course, 31 miles away. We've got an estimated range of 72 miles. Let's see what that is in terms of, um, hold on one second, we'll go to units, percentage, there we go, 17% state of charge. So we're we're gonna head up to, I believe it is a, unfortunately, I believe it is those, those Signet stations again, but you know, Kyle and I have been talking a lot about this, this kind of crazy yo-yo effect that's going on. And what I wanna do is I wanna plug into a 350 if I can and just kind of stay on the hook as opposed to, me doing my own ping pong and see what really happens throughout the whole life cycle of that curve. Um, the trip, at least how far we've gone so far, let's go over that. Trip information, um, we have gone a total of 534 miles. Again, normally this is about a 1,350 mile trip. So we'd only have about 800 miles to do today. But keep in mind, I drove over to uh, the East Coast and came up sort of a strange way in terms of 
um, this this navigation and this lucid sent me up Florida Turnpike Turnpike all the way to Orlando, and that was just a horrible. You know, the, not only was the session horrible, but it just um, it was just a jam in place. This Florida Mall, and from what I understand, lots of lines there usually. So I, I got lucky, and I was I had to wait for two people in front of me. But um, you know, so so let's let's see what happens if I try to use this navigation again um, for uh, for just because yesterday I was having trouble with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, I'm going to go to Electrify. Wait a second. Let me go. Let me go back here um, and go back one more time. Let me try the charging the charging app again and you see it still says sort and filter I mean I just don't know what I'm doing wrong here um, for minimum charger power CCS okay electrify Canada I don't really I'm not in Canada 50 availability all right sort come on show me something uh, if I say show all chargers, it shows all chargers, but uh, just a bunch of charge points here heading back down to Jacksonville. That's not the direction I want to go. All right. So I, I and unfortunately, I really want to learn how to use this, but I'm just not doing it right. So we know where we're going to head off to. Um, we're going to use we're going to use. Uh, this Apple CarPlay right over here. We're going to go to this center. We're going to go directions and we're going to use Waze. And that's nice integration between um, between In these 0 0.1 miles. These turn two right. Apps, turn right. Plug share and Waze. So there we go. 37 miles. Um, I say we start we start today. What do, what do you think, Bailey? Should we go? Huh? All right, let's get going. Okay, so with 50 miles on the range, or in the tank, as I like to say, and only 24 hour, 24 miles away, I think it is time for us to precondition the battery. Uh, and I just got this look for charging station. Let's see what state of charge we're at. We'll go over here to vehicle, uh, no, to displays, units, percentage. There you are, right at right at that 13%. It just dropped to 12. So, yeah, I mean, clearly consistent. 13%, it tells you to look for the charging station. We are now, let me just make sure we're preconditioning. Oh, I forgot to hit the confirm button. Confirm preconditioning. There we go, and yeah, 23 miles outside of our next stop, which is Electrify America, so off we go. Right, so I just want to talk a little bit about this strange behavior we keep seeing at these Signet uh, CCS charging stations. Sort of very strange 
yo-yoing up and down. Um, we're not sure. I was talking to Kyle about this last night, and his theory is that maybe there's some kind of a software glitch with sort of higher voltage cars. So I want to keep an eye on this car for sure. Um, and I want to only plug in, I'm going up to Brunswick now, and I want to just plug in if I can, if it's available to the 350 and just leave it on there and see what kind of a charging, unless it's brutal, um, in which case I will change to a 150. But the question is, is Electrify America having some kind of an issue with higher voltage cars, whether they're, you know, the, the Lucid or the uh, Ionic 5 or any of the Korean, South Korean cars, I, um, you know, EV6. Uh, so I want to try and keep a close look on who else is charging on these 350s and also 150s. And if they're being affected, perhaps it's not the lower voltage cars. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. So we're going to keep an eye on that today. Uh, just to summarize, we are currently let's just say um i don't know 15 miles outside of brunswick georgia and we've got 31 miles in the tank and keep hands on the wheel it keeps telling me that it's really really sensitive which i don't mind uh, i'm trying to figure out the right spot to it, it's 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 not a capacitive wheel in this lucid so it's torque you have to keep a little bit of torque on it Otherwise, it will it will yell at you. This car. It also has two little red sensors just below where it says the miles of range you have left. Below the dash, there's a little black bar. It's got sort of angled on both sides. It's maybe about five inches wide. And um, what's interesting is that that little thing that sensor looks at your eyes. And if you're looking away, it'll remind you, hey, pay attention, which which is very good. I like that. I know in Tesla's implementation, they have a little camera up in the top, uh, but this seems like it's in a much better spot, uh, perhaps to control things. So, yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna keep an eye on these, uh, on these chargers today. Um, keep in mind yesterday, um, we're already 561 miles into this trip. I tried to find a hotel last night that had charging, but I couldn't find one because that would have been nice to wake up to a full, you know, a full battery this morning. Uh, on, if I had a, an AC level two, I would have I would have definitely gone to 100 percent. So, um, yeah. So anyway, this will be our second charging stop of the trip, and we're already 500. And, 561 miles into the trip here. So let's get in, let's keep going. Beautiful morning. Uh, temperature 68 degrees here in Georgia. And I anticipate there's gonna be a lot of traffic today because it is Sunday, April 16th. And this is the day that a lot of, a lot of the schools up in the Northeast, they head off this past week, including my wife, Kathy. So everybody's heading back to school or work and you know they got to figure out how to pay for all these fun vacations they've been taking including me so and a lot of people are going to be heading north south carolina is brutal you'll see we're on this uh this georgia highway which is great it's three lanes in one direction but once you hit into south carolina it goes to two lanes so later this morning um and later today there'll be just this huge backup in georgia just it's basically just traffic, everybody going down into one, into one uh, session. When I get up to Washington, D.C., I'm gonna definitely use the center lane. They have this one lane that goes one way in the morning and the other way in the afternoon, depending on which the heavier volume of traffic is. They do charge you for that, but it's worth every penny. So hopefully we'll be able to, I don't wanna make, I don't wanna miss that easy pass lane because that's critical. Um, and one thing I noticed, uh, a little bit of wildlife this morning on the side of the road. I was like, something's grazing off to the side of the road earlier. I didn't know what it was. It turns out it was a bunch of pigs, um, black 
pigs, hogs, I don't know, wild boars. I don't know what they were. Something's wild going on here in Georgia. Pigs on the side of 95 eating the grass. Man, I'll tell you what, that was a sight for uh, for a good morning, Sunday morning with my with my uh, red roof in coffee, you know, so. <laughs> All right, let's, let's keep going. It's just so much fun to be in this car. I've got the massaging seat going on. I, I mean, everything is just, it's just perfect. It really is a great place to just munch the miles in this car. Love it. As we're crossing over the Turtle River and beautiful, beautiful skies this morning. Well, here we are, in Brunswick, greeted by some graffiti and a nice sign here, maximum power of this 150. The ultra fast is limited due to software maintenance. Let's go ahead and plug into this 350 over here and see what happens. All right. Oh, the maximum power of this one is limited as well. We probably will not be staying here very long. I can pretty much guarantee you that. All right. Let's do the, the leg trick here. Oh, man. Handshake once again works. You can hear the, you can hear the car. Fans are blazing. Thermal management kicking in. The car's doing everything right. Look at these beautiful 19 inch wheels. The ride, how quiet it is, just amazing. Well, let's see what we pull here. I can tell you that if we don't get a good charge, we're gonna get just enough to leave and go somewhere else. Wow, 26 kilowatts. Twenty-seven. What state of charge are we at? We've plugged in at seven twenty-four a.m. here on April sixteenth. We're at a five percent state of charge. The battery is warm, preconditioned. Sixty-nine degrees out, and on a three fifty, we are pulling twenty-seven kilowatts. All these stations are software limited. Oh man, this is a sad state of affairs here. I mean, it really is. We are getting a consistent 27 kilowatts. If I'm not mistaken, I think I could get faster than that plugging into my house in a 110 socket. <laughs> Just kidding. But not by much. Two miles every minute. If you have any questions, please contact our customer support team at 1-833-632-2778. I've given up calling them. The people at Electrify America, they're super nice. You call them up. They, they're compassionate. They're helpful. They really care. Um, but they are powerless. I mean, they just have, they, they, they have no power what to do um, about these situations. And, and, and you know what's, you know what's amazing to me is these stickers are even, they're even fading and they're, they're peeling off a little bit. I mean, it's like this whole concept of let's put stickers on these chargers is just, um, I don't know. It, it, the best thing about these EA stations are the Walmarts. Because you can go in there and get pretty much anything you want. Ah. Uh, here we go. This is what it says on every one of these stations here. The maximum power of this charger has been temporarily reduced. I'm still pulling, still pulling 27 kilowatts. I just want to get out and see if the other one is, uh, the other 350 is doing the same. Yeah, this, uh. 150 Chatamo is doing the same thing. And this 350 over here, the Hyperfast with the darker green stickers. Wow. Major, major. 
Oh, nice, nice graffiti up there too. I mean, Electrify America, they can't help that, but why would people do that? Yeah, this one, this one also says that it is, uh, the good news is they're giving away free juice, complimentary session. How nice. Yeah, look at that right there. Every one of these stations here, Brunswick, is nerfed. Um, not good. This guy here, he's sleeping in his Model 3, not plugged in. He's got a couple of cute dogs. Let's see what we got going on here. 195 minutes left until 100%. So far, I've pulled 1.8 kilowatt hours in four minutes. I mean, gee, this is just horrendous. I guess that's my word of the day, horrendous. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it started pouring rain here, and... And now I'm pulling a whopping 10 kilowatts off this 350. I, I mean, what? 10 kilowatts? I've got to go 68.5 miles away to the next Electrify America station up the road. And I've only got a, I've only got a range of 27 uh, miles on, on uh, what am I at? 7%. I think what I'm going to do is take my chances here. I think it's starting to stop raining a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to unplug off the 350. I'm pulling 10 kilowatts off a of 350 here. I'm going to unplug from there and take my chances and go for this 150. Um, this guy, this guy over here in a model three, he's, uh, he's, he's blocking a charger. Number one. Um, not that it really matters because there's nobody here. He's got two cute dogs in the car and he's sound asleep in the back seat with the door open. And he's not plugged in. He doesn't have his uh, CCS Combo 1 adapter. So, I don't know. That's an interesting technique. Um, definitely saves on... Yeah, actually, probably a better better solution than the Red Roof Inn I stayed at. But, um, I don't know. Let me. I'm, I'm unplugging here. This is crazy. All right. So, what do we get here? Three kilowatt hours in eight minutes on a hyper fast up to one up to 350 crazy all right let's unplug here put this in here and let's grab let's grab this one all right All you Tesla guys are laughing at me right now. That's all right. Laugh. I look at this interior. Look at this beautiful ride. If I only had juice to use it. <laughs> all right, preparing to charge. I'm going for the 150 that says it's nerfed. That's my that's my my shot. Come on, give me some juice. Oh, you Tesla guys. Hey, I'm a Tesla guy too, so I can laugh at myself, right? Oh boy. Mm. Oh, you know the old saying, the pioneers, they get all the arrows. The only problem is CCS has been out for years. We're not really pioneers here. All right, come on, let's do it. Oh, uh, look at this. Ooh, 65, 66 kilowatts. We'll take it. All right. All right, 67 kilowatts. So station 01 is a 150, and I'm pulling 67 kilowatts on that as opposed to 24 <laughs> kilowatts on the 350. So I don't know. Use your head on what, what to do here. Bounce around on these chargers. I'm just going to sit here until I'm ready to go. Charging power limited by station. Yeah. No kidding. All right, so here I am in Brunswick, Georgia, and I can tell you, not a good session again here at Electrify America. In fact, bad session. We've got four chargers here. Each one of them says that they are software limited due to 
an upgrade or maintenance or what have you. The 350 I just plugged into over here, I pulled 24 kilowatts to start and it tapered down nicely to 10 kilowatts. Oh man. So then I unplugged and I plugged into this uh, 150 over here, the Ultra, not the Hyper, but the Ultra, which isn't even supposed to be as fast. And I'm pulling a whopping 64 kilowatts right now. There's a Model 3 over there, not plugged in. The guy's just sleeping in the back seat with his two dogs and definitely had a better experience than I did at the Red Roof Inn last night. But, uh, you know, look, every single one of these chargers is nerfed right now. Um, this is really just a not, not a good situation. I'm just getting enough charge so I can leave here as fast as possible. And uh, the only good thing about this place, and I've been here many times, is across the street, you got a Captain D's over there, which is some really nasty fried seafood. And of course, you got a Walmart over here, which has a lot of nasty stuff too. So um, yeah, man, I hope I get home. Wow. I, I thought I saw the worst charging sessions ever with the yo-yo, with the, with, the, with the roller coaster charging sessions, 60, 150, whatever. No. Brunswick, Georgia, you just won the crown for the worst charging session I've ever seen in my life. On a 350, I pulled 24 kilowatts. Consistently. That's the only good thing. It ramped up to 24 and it stayed there. Exit right. Then I said, this is not good. So I unplugged. I went to the 150 and it ramped up to 58 kilowatts and it stayed there. This car was preconditioned. This is a Lucid Air capable of charging over 300 kilowatts. And, and I'm pulling 24 kilowatts on a 350. And every one of the four charging stations had um, had uh, a sign on it saying software limited, uh, power limited because of software maintenance to improve our service. I mean, seriously, this is this is now this is a joke. This is Easter weekend. Everybody's heading home like I don't even understand this. And then to make matters worse, there's some guy in a Tesla Model 3 laying in the back seat with his door open and two little cute dogs and um, he had his eye mask on and he wasn't plugged in. He didn't have a combo adapter. He's just just blocking one of the EA stations asleep. And then um, I was talking to a nice gentleman who was asking all questions about um, electric cars. He's thinking about getting a Model Y or, and I was like, you want a road trip? Don't buy anything except the Tesla. And, uh, and then he's like, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. But I said, listen, if you're going to have a car and just day, day trip it, whatever, you're fine with the, any car, right? They're all good. The cars are way better than network, unless you're talking Tesla. But, um, so anyway, this guy in the Tesla gets mad at me for talking and slams the door. So we're headed up to Pooler, Georgia now. I think I'm calmed down. I don't know. But, um, yeah, we're 65 miles away from Pooler, Georgia. Another Walmart. Another Electrify America. Um, they have these end markets around here, but a lot of them are only 62 and a half kilowatts. But, you know, that might be my better bet. I don't really care about the money. I don't care that it's free charging. I just want to get home. But um, I think the Pooler, if I'm not mistaken... I think those may be ABB units, and I, I'm hoping that I can get a better charging session there. So I ended up overcharging on that 150. It was pulling 58 kilowatts pretty pretty uh, consistently, and I charged up to, what did I go up to? Um, state of charge of 25%. And, yeah, I mean, like, it's it was time to leave. I, a um, nice gentleman came up, was asking me all kinds of questions. About, I ended up overcharging. I, I, I'm, I've got 125 miles of range and I'm only 64 miles away from Fuller, Georgia. So anyway, hammer down. Uh, let's make some time. Okay, so we are three and a half miles away from Fuller, Georgia. The, yet again, another, another Walmart. We've got 8% state of charge, plenty of range here. We're 636 miles into the trip. Um, 
let's just check this out here. Let's see what we got going on here. We've got, um, yeah, 637 miles into the trip, averaging 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. And these 19s continue to be amazing and smooth and quiet. Um, this car is phenomenal. It's a great road tripper. But there's a theme brewing here, folks, that's really starting to eat at me. Uh, some of you may remember that I deliberately road tripped the Tesla Model S coming back over the holiday break over the winter. And I deliberately used just the CCS network. And it wasn't that bad. But things have deteriorated a lot. And I don't know what is going on with this EA network, but if you're thinking about buying a road tripping car, I I am having a hard time. In a quarter of a mile, exit right. I'm having a real hard time justifying right now buying anything other than the Tesla. I said it. Exit right. It's it's really a sad state of affairs out here right now, folks, with this EA network. And I don't believe it's an anomaly. So as I was saying, it, it's really a sad state of affairs out here. I mean, these manufacturers are building these gorgeous cars. The cars are light years in terms of capability ahead of what the network is. Look, if you want to buy one of these cars, an EQS, a Lucid, you're going to daily drive it. You're going to charge it in your home. You want a luxury experience and you really want to, you know, just step up the game in terms of the the how nice the car is and how you're, you've got everything going for you, um, you know, from a quality standpoint, you know, that, that makes sense. But, you know, this car has 516 miles of EPA rated range for a reason. It's made the road trip. It's made to go over long distances. But the problem is these manufacturers, they're, what are they doing? They're partnering with, with EA and offering free charging and EA is not a good partner. They're just not. They're not giving the consumer, and in this case, the consumer is not me. The consumer is the manufacturer. The manufacturer has signed up for a service that's, uh, look, the service that I got from Lucid in terms of how they took care of me with, with my AC situation, top notch. I mean, just the best. And yet, they outsource the charging of their cars. Why? Because they're not in the network business, right? Who is? Tesla is. EA is not in the network. They're not in the business of, of, uh, of, of charging either. 
The only reason they're doing it is because it's a lawsuit and they're not doing it well and they're not providing good service. So here I am at Pooler. I believe these are the ABB units. We have some more graffiti on them. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm going to charge here and we're going to have to see what's going on. This is an excellent charging session on a 150. I don't think you can ask for more than this. You know, I plugged in and immediately jumped up to 174. No ping ponging. Uh, I mean, I'm at 12%. I'm uh, pulling 170, 173. This is, this is good. Oh, man. My heart was racing there. I, I For a while, I'm just getting so angry. And uh, I like to be positive. I don't like to be mad. It's no fun being mad. Oh, man, this is a great charging session. Boy, I'll tell you what. I don't know what's going on with these signets. It's horrible. All right, so my strategy here is, um, is as follows. We are getting real good juice on this session, pulling 173, 174 solid. We're at 27% right now. A big run up to Sheets, which is Electrify America in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. It's 348 miles away, according to Waze. And I'm predicting that we're gonna have relatively slow traffic at 9 a.m. It's, uh, well, it's 69 degrees out, it's 9, 12 a.m., and the traffic is starting to build. I think South Carolina is going to be a disaster, my prediction. It'll open back up in North Carolina. So I'm going to do a deep charge here. Um, I'm going to go probably very high into the pack and get as much juice as needed to safely pull into uh, this Sheets Electrify America, which is 348 miles away. So I think I'm going to run into Walmart and I'm going to put the pup on what is makeshift dog mode. Basically, um, you can maintain the temperature here in the Lucid, um, although it does not give you any kind of a screen. But uh, Bailey is, is, she's out for the count. She is down, sleeping like a, like a Bailey dog. And uh, here we are at 30%, still pulling that 174. So I think I'm going to go roam the halls of Walmart and see what kind of bargains I can find. But um, yeah, I, this, is a, this is a good charging session. Bailey, are you having a good time? Oh, yeah. Road trip, baby. You're, what are you, you watching? You're looking at the chargers over there? Is that what you're doing? You're... you're you're like security, right? You're making sure that nobody comes over there and unplugs us. You want to say anything to everybody? Huh? Really? You don't say. Yeah, I know. I'm upset too. But at least we're getting a good session here on this ABB. Hey, Bailey. You know that we, we're charging to 100%. We're going to have over 500 miles of estimated range. With these 19s, let's see what we get. This could be good. I mean, I have a feeling we're going to be going slow in South Carolina. We may get six, 700 miles and never get home. What do you think about that? Huh? What do you think about that? Oh, boo bear. Okay, so here we are at a 99% state of charge pulling 12 kilowatts. We plugged in at a 7% state of charge, and we've been here for 78 minutes and received a total of 114.6 kilowatt hours. Um, my advice is, has changed. When you find a good charging unit, just charge to 100%. This is crazy. I mean, like, why risk it? Um, I am showing 515 miles of range on the, uh, on the indicator, and we're gonna blow through both South Carolina and North Carolina. And I hope I don't forget to leave. I hope I, I hope I remember to take my coffee off the, uh, off the roof. I've been known to do that. Now, Bailey, it's time. You gotta take a little drink. Come on, girl. Hey, Bailey, drink up, girl. Pull up to the bar. Hey, I don't know what it is. She doesn't want anything to drink. All right. You can see how slowly it's adding energy here. 
um, after 83 minutes, 115.748. Now watch this. Every once in a while it goes up by like, look at that, 0.7830. It's taking energy, but ever so little. Uh, now I do have the car with the dog mode or makeshift dog mode on, and so I'm running the AC on the car now to keep the pup cool. But boy, oh boy, this thing is just, it's just sipping it like a butterfly drinks water. All right, so I'm plugged in. No longer, well, I'm going to unplug because I just hit 100%. I have a 112 kilowatt hour battery, and it looks like I took 116.49 kilowatt hours. But I plugged in with a 7% state of charge. So what's interesting to me is, once again, quite a bit of thermal heat loss uh, on the charger. But I am showing 515 miles of, of range at 100% state of charge because obviously the software the software update worked now that I've got the 19s on. Previously at 100% state of charge, it would show four, 467 or 462, something like that. So good stuff, long charging session. This was 84 uh, minutes, but you know what? With the infrastructure as bad as it is, I figure I'm gonna take the juice while I can. So I'm uh, deliberately charged to 100% and I'm gonna go on my way at a nice McDonald's breakfast, breakfast of champions, and it's time to blow out of here. So good charging session. Thank you ABB for these reliable chargers. I'm really happy with this session today. And I needed it, trust me, I did. All right, so finally, we had a good charging session here. Not a great one, but a good one on a 150. The 350s were all occupied by F-150 Lightning and an Ionic 5, which is fine. But I plugged into the 150 and pulled 174 right out of the gates. And you know what I said? I said, I'm gonna have a new theory. Because of all these bad Signet chargers up and down this uh, 95 corridor, when I found this ABB here in Pooler, Georgia, I said, I'm going to 100%. So I walked all the way over there and had a McDonald's breakfast, which probably wasn't a smart thing to do because now I don't feel so good. But uh, I listen, I walked the dog. 84 minutes, I took it from 7% all the way up to 100%, and it's showing 515 miles of range with the 19-inch wheels. So I just put these on, and uh, we've got the new the new um, you know software on there, so it'll show the higher range. But I have a feeling because we're about to go through South Carolina where the three lanes goes to two from Georgia to South Carolina, I'm probably gonna be crawling and we may get to see some super high ranges today. We'll have to see. Um, anyway, it's good when you can do this and have super high range to minimize the interaction with Electrify America. When you find a good one, charge to 100%. That's my new theory. So one of the things that I had, I, I had uh, when I first drove the Lucid Air, both the Touring and the Grand Touring over at the Westchester Mall. It was interesting because they were both at very high states of charge. And, and one of the things I noticed was the lack of regen at that state of charge of let's say 400 and, I, I think it was showing, I, I, the Grand Touring I drove had 19s and it was showing 460 or 470 miles of range. So, you know, it was, it was down maybe let's say 10%, maybe a 90% state of charge. And the amount of regen that I felt was was very reduced. Um, and as a matter of fact, I know that a, a couple of people commented to me that on, on the Lucid Owners Forum that I didn't know what I was talking about. And the point I was trying to make is that when you drive a car at a very high state of charge, the energy has nowhere to go back into the battery because the battery can't take it. Or if the conditions are present that the battery can't take it for whatever reason, it wastes that energy off and it doesn't put it in the form of, of regen. Um, so anyway, some people said, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And uh, okay, maybe I don't. But one of the things that, that Tesla does that I think is, is very cool is that at a high state of charge, when regen is reduced, because it is, um, they actually use the friction brakes to mimic the same exact feel that you have of regen at a much lower state of charge. I think that's that's next level thinking and, and I love that. But the reason I'm telling you all this now is because here I am 
showing 400 and 498 miles of range at a state of charge of what am I at? 498 a state of charge of 96 percent, and this regen is biting. It's biting strong, and um, I don't know if if maybe one of the settings was off on that car that I drove, and maybe I was wrong. Maybe this car does have strong regen at high, well, I know my car does, so maybe I didn't know what I was talking about and deserve the bashing that I got. Um, but, you know, look, I, we're all learning, we're all trying to help each other, but I will give you this data point. At 96% state of charge, in this Lucid Grand Touring, I've got strong regen, and I'm happy. Um, I did not have it in the Grand Touring at, uh, I'll call it a 90% state of charge, and shame on me if I if I didn't look in the menu that the, that regen was off. I don't know why Lucid would be showing a car um, to consumers for test drives with regen off. I mean, that's one of the best features of an electric car. I love regen. I mean, I, this car has super strong regen, and I love every bit of it. It seems to be very properly tuned as well. So anyway, we are... Um, I've put into ways, I've sort of given up, I, I'm not going to give up, but I, I'm going to put into my uh, Lucid Navigation a destination of way up the road, but I put in uh, Rocky Mount, Electrify America, it's 334 miles away, um, we should make that no problem, I'm probably going to blow past that and head into Virginia, but we've got a lot of driving to do between now and then. I kind of want to get a Dairy Queen ice cream cone. You know the ones where you can dip it in the chocolate and then you don't want to eat that in the car, especially on a hot day, because it's a mess. You need to get like four times the amount of napkins on one of those. But I, I just want to get a small, nothing big, but I kind of want a Dairy Queen ice cream cone today. Thank goodness I don't have a craving for uh, Chick-fil-A because it's Sunday. One thing I've noticed about this Dream Drive Pro when you're actually using Highway Assist is that when the, there are exits, here in the state of South Carolina, they have dotted lines that continue straight and then the exit line curves off. And this car gets confused. It starts going off, then it comes back and it's really, and when it realizes that it's off and it needs to come back, it comes back aggressively. I've waited about three or four times to actually post this because I thought it was an anomaly at first, but it's actually something that I think Lucid engineers might want to take a look at in terms of refining that, that skill of not getting off an exit when there is, um, when there is a dotted line. Now, I haven't really seen any kind of strange behavior early days when Tesla first came out with autopilot it used to always get confused like and it, it maybe still does uh, in some cases where um where it, it'll it'll appear as if it's going to get off the exit and then come back this car doesn't seem to do that as much i'm going to keep an eye on that when there are no lines in other words it's it's just you're, you're driving down the road all of a sudden an exit comes off and the line goes off to the right and there's no lines in between the far right exit ramp and the and the main highway it seems to track pretty well and stay on that it's only when i see those dotted lines so um 
let me know what you think if that's something that you if you've got a lucid if you're if you're experiencing that with the highway assist uh, so i ask you a question what more do you need in life than a dairy queen cone dipped in chocolate a lucid and a stucky's dog park for bailey are you kidding me look at this bailey we got to get out here we got we definitely got to get out here and, and run around oh man oh so happy Mm. Mm, mm, mm. love it bailey come here you want ice cream come here girl bailey come here come here little girl you want some ice cream come here bailey here you want ice cream you want ice cream yeah. All right, so as we say goodbye to the Stuckies here with the dog park and the uh, Texaco gas with the Tecron, we see that there is a Model X here towing a trailer with an interesting strategy of blocking how many, how many superchargers? One, two, three, four, five superchargers. Yeah, that's the way to do it, right there. Yeah, just take out five. Don't unhook the super the trailer or anything like that. So, uh, interesting technique. Stuckies, we shall see you later. All right, so here we are in somewhere in South Carolina, actually 60 miles south of Bucky's, which is, I think, 10 or 15 miles south of Pedro's. So we're finally moving in South Carolina. It's 1.31 p.m. And, uh, you know, like, I was just thinking, like, here in South Carolina, in addition to a two-lane road on Route 95, well, let's think about it, a two-lane road, 95, why can't you make it three or four lanes here? I've asked this before of you, South Carolina. Please, can you request? But one, three things you do have that are good or maybe one thing you have that's good, and then two sort of bookends. You got Stuckies, you got Bucky's, and you got Pedro. I mean, that's all in one state within 70 miles of each other. And Stuckies has Dairy Queen with the chocolate dip. I mean, and then Bucky's, he's got, not only does he have buck teeth, he's selling some really good beef jerky and some brisket sandwiches. And then Pedro, you know, like, I mean, what does Pedro have? Uh, tacos. <laughs> there also is a DC fast charger there, a shell recharge. But uh, I, I don't think we're going to need that. All right. So anyway, just to kind of go over the trip a little bit. So far, we are 761 miles into the trip with an average miles per kilowatt hour of 3.4. We've burned 221 kilowatt hours. Now, keep in mind, the first roughly two and a half hours of this trip were on the 21 inch wheels from Marco all the way over to um, over to Riviera Beach to the Lucid Service Center where I had the the, the wheels swapped to the 21s. I got the 21s in the back here. Um, but since our last charge, because it's been sort of a combination of, you know, 85, 75 when the traffic is moving, to 10, 15, 30 rubber banding. We're doing great now, but listen to this. In the last 122 miles, we've burned 33 kilowatt hours, 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is, which is quite good efficiency. Now this car is very much weighted down, but I think this is where aero comes in. So 85 degrees out, it's 133 on Sunday, April 16th. Uh, Bailey just went running around the dog park. Actually, she didn't really want her. She just kind of walked around and looked at me like, can you put me back in the car? Um, this girl's a road tripping queen. She wants in the car. Well, Bailey, Bucky's is just, um, is, is just jamming today. Um, uh, I think we're going to pass on it. The cars can't even, they can't even get in here. We tried. We tried to see Bucky's.
Well, I'm just north of Bucky's in South Carolina on 95 and just completely stopped. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Traffic? This is, this is a parking lot. This is not traffic. You know it's bad when a guy just puts his car in park in a Toyota from Michigan, gets out of his car, nonchalantly walks to his trunk, opens his trunk, gets out some Ritz crackers and some goldfish, and then gently closes the trunk and then gets back in. This is traffic. Hey, Ben, you're never going to believe where we are. Look. Do you want to look? Look where we are. Do you see? Do you see where we are? Look where we are. You want to get out? Let's go. We're going to go out. What do you think? What do you think, Bailey? Huh? <laughs> oh, 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 Bailey! Yeah! Remember the totem pole? Oh yeah, you gotta watch your step here. But look at this, we got the totem pole. We got the dog house. We got the palm tree. And we've got the sombrero over there. Oh yeah. So I'm trying to shell recharge here at uh, Pedro's place here, south of the border. I figure if I'm ever in a pinch and I need to use shell recharge, even though it's a 150 and I'm at 47%, um, you know, it's a BTC power unit and let's just see, it's a, I believe this will put out maximum of 150 kilowatts. Yep. So that says 150. And currently I'm getting 48 kilowatts at a 48% state, 47% state of charge. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to see how this works. You do have to use the, the app. Uh, you got to make sure I put $10 on there and, uh, yeah, I got it. I, you know, it worked. So what I would say is in a pinch, if you need juice, come see Pedro here right on the border of North and South Carolina. And if you need gas, you got a Sunoco gas station right over there as well. But I need a taco. And I think there's a restaurant across the street. My favorite place over here, which has got the chili dogs, the tacos, the hot dogs. And by the way, they sell beer in there, too, just in case you got to need a beer for the road. Um, or they used to, it's, it's being remodeled, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, I would say this, this, this stop is, is a good one. If you're in a pinch and actually 48 kilowatts or 47 kilowatts is not bad compared to the 350 that I got yesterday. Or was that this morning? I can't remember. So anyway, Pedro, thank you for your juice. So here I am at south of the border in South Carolina, and what do we find here? We've got a Shell Recharge. This used to be Green Lots Shell Recharge. There's a couple of BTC uh, chargers here, which are max 150. I plugged in at a state of charge of 48%, and I pulled 48 kilowatts. And then it jumped up to 146 kilowatts at a 50% state of charge. And now it's tapered down to 111. It hit a it hit a step. It wasn't a smooth transition, and it jumped down at 53% to 111. And now it's hovering between 111 and 112 kilowatts at a 57% state of charge. Um, I got to tell you, that's not terrible compared to the the charging sessions that I've been having at Electrify America. I did have to open an account with them. I put my credit card in there, ten dollars. I don't know how much it's going to cost. Honestly, I don't really care. 
but I wanted to get this set up during the day because this place at night can be a little interesting. Um, my favorite little hot dog place and taco place is closed for remodeling. Can you believe that? So anyway, more importantly, we've got charging here at south of the border. There's two 150s. Both of them have Chatamo, which is good. So if you happen to be driving by in a Leaf, well, pull on in. You can get some juice. Um, look, 146 at 52% state of charge is not bad. I would imagine down low in the pack, I'd probably pull that right away. So I would say this is a viable option. All right, so just a quick update after uh, seeing Pedro at south of the border. You know, this this Shell recharge station, it's, it's kind of in a nice strategic location because south of Pedro, about 25 miles is Bucky's. And while Bucky's in Florence has an amazing Tesla supercharger install, there's no CCS there. And in fact, today, when I was there, as you probably saw in the video, there was you couldn't even get in there. The place was jamming. Um, it didn't even have enough parking spots for the cars. The cars were piled up in the road. I got off to go get some beef jerky and and a, uh, a, a sandwich, and I couldn't even get in there, so I just turned around and left. But it's nice to know that these two BTC 150 kilowatt stations are at south of the border because uh, it's a little bit of a desert unless you go to all the way down to Florence. So anyway, um, you know, decent session there. Uh, what I did was I plugged, I had it open an account because I think my account uh, must have, it used to be a Green Lots account. Now Shell Recharge bought Green Lots and that's how they've branded it. It's interesting that Shell Recharge was at a Sunoco station, not a Shell gas station. Um, I plugged in at a 48% state of charge and, and it jumped up to right around 48 kilowatts. And then right after that, it jumped right up to 146 until about a 52% hazard reported ahead. Until about a 52% state of charge, uh, it jumped down to 111 and it hovered in that area. Um, it actually ramped up a little bit to 114 and I unplugged in around a 63% state of charge. I just was, um, oh boy, nice little, little activity in front of me there. Uh, yeah, so so I, I unplugged at 63%. I've got a uh, 319 miles of range. Let me see what state of charge I'm at here. Uh, just, just driving. Driving first. That's key. Vehicle, trip information. Okay. Since my last charge, it says I've gone 25 miles with a 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. I mean, I'm, I'm moving along pretty good here. Um, yeah, we're 874 miles, 875 miles into the trip. And I don't know if I'm gonna make it home tonight. That South Carolina traffic north of Bucky's was horrible, really bad. And uh, I'm not really sure. And I was thinking, you know, this car, right? I haven't really talked too much about the car other than the fact that the 19s are quieter and I'm getting better efficiency, which is, I'm very happy with that and pleased that I have these wheels. And the wheels are kind of growing on me. And, you know, they, they serve their purpose, right, which is good. Up in the Northeast, we get tons of potholes. And it's just a matter of time before I blow one of those tires out and then I have to deal with it. The, the 21s, although they, they do look sweet. But, you know, the car has been working really well. I downloaded 20. 0 0.59 just before I left on the trip and the lane changes the manual lane changes are definitely way smoother than they were before as far as how to take it out of um, uh, you know when you're you're tracking and lane centering and then all of a sudden you put your turn signal on the just very very subtle amount of force takes you out of lane centering which is great and then it reconnects in the next lane so that's been working flawlessly plug and charge has been working fla flawlessly but I just noticed, just now, the first problem, I haven't had any software problems with this car. Uh, occasionally, it kind of like, it doesn't connect to Apple CarPlay, so then I plug in, which I actually plug in anyway, because I use Waze, and Waze really munches on your battery. So I typically like to use um, uh, the wire, the USB-C cable, 
with with ways anyway my iphone 14 uh but but it but it hasn't been connecting up uh all the time but i think maybe that's maybe that's something i'm doing wrong but when i put on the turn signals i've lost my little my little cameras my little my little visuals in the in the front dash in front of the steering wheel um they just don't they don't come on anymore where it says air in the right that disappears and then it just becomes a blank screen and then where you've got i've got trip a shown on the left hand side of the speedometer when i put on my left turn signal that just disappears and it's a blank screen so i don't know i'll probably end up doing a soft reset the way you do that is you hold your um, your little credit card size your card up to the b pillar and then walk away and i typically like to let it sit for about 15 minutes before I go back to the car. Uh, and that that's what's called a soft reset. There are multiple ways to do it, but that's probably the easiest way. And I turn my phone key off Bluetooth when I do that, just to ensure that it doesn't get like a false a false uh, awakening, if you will. Yeah, so anyway, I, I imagine I'll get the cameras back once I do a soft reset. No idea why they just stopped working, kind of weird. Uh, couple of additional thoughts about the car um, some I like and some I don't like in terms of the lane centering when you first turn on highway assist you you can invoke it by pushing a certain button now, I'm not going to train you on how to use the car it'd be hard for you to see but you push this button and it will invoke highway assist but the first time you start up the car and invoke highway assist it doesn't do steering. There's, there's, it, it tells you you have to push a different button and hold it in a long hold. And then after that point, when you come off of auto steer and lane centering, you don't have to keep doing that long hold. You can just push that button again to re-engage highway assist. I'm not quite sure why they do that. Maybe it's just because, maybe that's because I don't really know. I'm not sure. Maybe if you just want to use adaptive cruise, maybe that's it without the high, without the lane centering. There you go. I think that's probably it. Um, so I take that back. I don't like it. I actually do like it, but I was confused by it. I had to think it through. Um, forgive me. I've been on the road by myself with my little pup for a day and a half, I think. So, well, you know, you live and learn. <laughs> Back to the concept of when you first push the lower left-hand button to invoke highway assist, that just puts it on adaptive cruise. And then if you do a long hold on that same button, then it adds highway assist. What I just realized, and I know I should read the manual, but I didn't because I'm driving, but I probably should, which is embedded in the car. Um, but if you just toggle and hold that same button again, it toggles between highway assist and adaptive cruise, which makes all the sense in the world. So one of the things that I do like about the uh, the eGMP platform cars, the Ionic 5s, the EV6s, the GV60, is that you can actually invoke auto steer lane centering, but not, not do the, um, the adaptive cruise. And the reason why I like that feature is because, you know, when you're in a lot of tight traffic and... And you, you can select, like in this car, there's four different levels or four different distances um, that, that uh, how close you're going to be to the car in front of you. And, and some cars have seven, some cars have fewer, what have you. But the thing is that uh, that guy's wheel looks like it's about to fall off. So on a truck. Uh, I think it's a retread coming off. I hate, I've never actually seen a retread fall off, but I think that's about to. I'm glad I went past them when I did. Anyway, if you can invoke lane centering, but not have the adaptive cruise on, then what you could do is you can use the accelerator to close the gap, you know, in between you and the front. You know, when these people come up and they sneak up, even when you have it on the closest setting, it's, it's more stress to me to use the adaptive cruise in those sort of aggressive 
um, you know, New York City, Palisades Parkway, Merritt Parkway, when people are really jamming on there. But I do like to um, use my uh, manual acceleration, but I do like to keep the, the auto steer. And I don't believe you can do, well, I know you can't do that on a Tesla, and I know you can on an Ionic 5 or GV60, but I wonder if you can do that on the Lucid. Comment below if you know how to do that. And if you can't do that, I'd like to put a request in the Lucid that I would like that. Give me auto steer, but let me manually use the accelerator. That's my request. Okay, so we've arrived at Sheets and Rocky Mount, Electrify America. There's no one here. We've got one 350, another 350, a 150, and a 150. And uh, these are all the troublesome Signet chargers. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug into one of the 350s, and I'm going to record the session just to kind of see what really happens here. But uh, so let's let's go in here. There we go. And let's see what happens. I'm at a I'm at a 35% state of charge and 76 degrees outside. I've preconditioned before I got here. And let me see. I'm going to turn off AC. I'm going to roll down the windows a little bit because it's nice out. 76 degrees. Initiating charging. We've got the 350 right there. All right. Welcome driver. Once again, every single time plug and charge just works. All right. Let's see what happens here. Is it going to do the ping pong thing? Or are we going to get a good charging session? Oh, charging session error, drive system fault, contact customer care. What? That is bizarre. Charging system error, drive system fault. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to unplug and move over to the... 350 over there. This is kind of scary. Wow. What is happening here? Trying to put it in park or drive. It's not allowing me to do it. I better contact customer care. What the heck? All right, so Lucid Customer Care, they, they sent a reset to the car. The whole car died um, sitting over there at the O2 site. The O2 site says it's available now, um, but here we go. I've moved over to the O4 site, and hopefully the same thing doesn't happen. It's 7 p.m. I am at a... Oh, look at this. It seems to be doing... Is it doing a yo-yo thing here? I'm at a uh, 30, what percent charge am I at? Let me look at this. Displays, units, percentage, 37. I, pr I plugged in to, um, at a 35% state of charge and looks like it's not going to do the same thing. That was really bizarre. I mean, the whole screen, I, you guys saw it, it went... It went red, and then, and then the whole car was like the doors were locked. I was lo I was inside the car, and the whole car died. I had to I had to call Lucid, and they they sent some sort of a a message out to the car, and then it, it came alive. And when it came alive again, um, it it seemed to uh, it seemed to be fine. The whole car was fine, and I just moved over here. Now I'm on this Electrify America the 350. And it seems to be a pretty good session here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if 157 kilowatts is good or bad at 38%. I don't, know, I don't really have enough data to say whether or not that's good or bad or not. But I am going to record this entire session right now. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Bizarre. Man, it's never easy. 
I mean, look, I, I know I'm, I'm really trying hard here. The car is just so great. Someone commented on the Lucid Owners Forum, I think it was earlier, or maybe one of my YouTube videos, you know, the old saying, you got to put the cart before the horse. The cars are so good, but the, the charging network is just so bad. Why does it do this? I don't understand it. I, I don't have any of this anxiety with Tesla. I really, really love this car, though. I just, you know, I we just need it to work. So, I don't know. It's very strange. Here I am in Rocky Mount at the Sheets, and EA almost fried my Lucid, and I'm getting really mad. Um, thank goodness Lucid um, was able to send a reset to my car, but I had everything. It, it could the car completely went off. I had red lights everywhere. It was insane. Right now, if you look at plug share, it says number one is offline over here, which it is now. It says number two is unavailable. And, and in right now, this is the station that I pulled into that fried my car. At, and the whole thing, all the red lights went off, every single error message, and then the whole car died. And I was sitting in the car, and the car was locked. I had to use the manual thing to get out. I called, I called Lucid, and they were able to send a reset to my car, thank goodness, and um, the whole thing was dead. And then right now, if you look at PlugShare, it says that number three is is unavailable, and and number four that I just moved over to the 350, it says available, and I'm charging on it right now. That's what PlugShare says. I do not know what's going on in this world right now with EA. Are you kidding me? I'm like, this is crazy, guys. I've got a good session. I plugged in at, at um, 37% and I pulled 168 kilowatts. No ping ponging on this session at all. And I'm currently at a 71% state of charge. And in a second here, when it cycles through, I can tell you what I'm pulling, but it's probably around north of 100 and north of 100 or so. I could go and look at my car over here and see. Let me do that because these screens, the EA, oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, I'm pulling 96 kilowatts right now. So it's actually a decent session that I've got here. But man, the drama. I really, I thought my whole car was fried. Oh, man. All right, so as I pull out a Rocky Mount, um, pull out a Rocky Mount, that was, uh, that was a little bit uh, too much entertainment for, for me. I... Um, Man, I'll tell you what, I really thought the car was fried. It, the lights went off and it was red everywhere. And I had a red glow on my face. And, and then it said all the, the systems were unavailable. And, and then the whole car went dead. And, and what was bizarre was what was strange was that it first, when I plugged in, it kicked up at like a good session. It went up to like 234 and all of a sudden, then it just died. And uh, thank goodness I called Lucid and the rep there, I forget his name, I wish I remember, but look, they're trained to do what they're, they're, they're to do. He sent a reset and it, it's, it's the software um, that, uh, you know, that allowed the car to, to actually get reset. So um, very, very happy with that. And right now I don't know where I am. All right, so anyway, a um, lot of anxiety there. I was, just got disoriented. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Electrify America. They, they really, um, they're really not coming through for me um, or for a lot of other people. Now keep right and then keep left towards Interstate 95, Richmond. So anyway, the car is great. I love this Lucid. I just need a reliable charging. So, I mean, actually, at the end of the day, I got a decent session there. Now keep um, left and then keep right to take exit 464B towards Interstate 95, Richmond. All right. I, I will do that. So, anyway, it's just it's just so much drama. Anyway, you get the drill. Let's keep going. Uh, we're in Rocky Mount. I need to go home. Quarter of a mile. Keep right to take exit 4. I need to go home. I'm getting tired. I'm probably going to stay overnight again tonight. Otherwise, I'm going to get home at 3 or 4 a.m., which is, uh, I could do it, but, I mean, no big deal. 
but uh, I think I'm just gonna just go home. I mean, just stay overnight somewhere. So anyway, I did charge up to 97%. That way I don't have to worry about any kind of charging sessions going home. Um, this, that was my last one, unless I choose to stop in and for a little more entertainment. Uh, maybe Kyle wants me to check out a few different things, maybe some more of those signets and see if we can find a little bit more samples of those yo-yos. Look, no yo-yoing at, uh, at that, at that station just now. So that was good, but, um, throw fry, uh, fry a lucid into the new equation. I mean, it literally locked up my whole car. The thing was jammed. I couldn't get out of the car. I had to like pull the, the switch. Uh, the whole thing was dead. Thank goodness, Lucid. Boy, I'll tell you what, their customer service has been phenomenal. And uh, what a car. What a car. Okay, so you join me on day three of this trip. Um, we are actually somewhere in, <laughs> in Maryland. I forget the name of the town. I think we're near Aberdeen. And... We're going to meet Kyle this morning and Timon up at Timon's dad, mom and dad's house in Far Hills, New Jersey. So I, I thought I would spend a little bit more time with this Lucid Navigation. Uh, I was thinking about it last night and it's actually um, showing me what to do this morning a little bit more clearly. Now, if you go to manage over here, it's telling me that what I need to do is stop at the Walmart in Abington. And I've currently got 102 miles of range in the uh, uh, in the tank, which is a 22% and distance it says 102 miles. So if I go back over to the navigation, let's just see, pull this down here then um, it's telling me that I need to go and charge at this 350 in Abington, a Walmart. So um, we could do that, or we could actually burn a few more uh, miles and charge further up the road and bring it down to a lower state of charge, which is what I think I want to do. So I think I'm going to skip this Abington, but this is, this is kind of nice because it tells you all the, the locations of where you need to go. And then me, I, you know, I, if I just pay attention to the instructions, I should have the first time. And then there it tells you, okay, you're, you should stop there at Walmart, how long you should start there, uh, what state of charge you'll arrive with, uh, what state, how long you should charge and what state of charge you'll, you'll leave with, how long you should actually charge for. Um, so, so I think that this is actually pretty good, very Tesla like, and then finally, um, our destination, Far Hills, New Jersey, which is 149 miles away. But I think in the meantime, what I'm going to do is we had a nice sleep here in, in Maryland. Bailey is, uh, Bailey, what you doing, girl? You, good morning to you. Yeah, this trip continues. Yes, it does. But uh, yeah, so so let's let's keep going. So as soon as I started to drive away from the hotel, the navigation in the Lucid actually changed my first stop, rather than from the Electrify America station Aberdeen at a Walmart. It's now sending me, which was only about I don't know a few miles away from my hotel. It's now sending me to a Wawa. I love that word Wawa. Uh, it's a little, you know, fast food, gas station, um, convenience store place, uh, similar to a 7-Eleven. And that's 42 miles away. And what's nice is it tells me right on the on, on the screen, if you go to the manage uh, button, that we are will arrive there at 9.05. It's 8.18 a.m. now. It is up. There's a 350 there. Um, it doesn't, it, it tells me that I'm going to arrive there with a 10% state of charge and, and it tells me how long I should stay there for. So, you know, look, I, I think that's, that's pretty good. Uh, uh we're going to stick with this, this lucid navigation this morning 
and do what it says and actually listen to what it says to do for a change. So, um, yeah, here we go. So just a quick update. You can see the navigation on the car is actually integrated quite nicely. I've gotten to like this, uh, especially when I listen to what it says to do. So on the center screen, you can see that it tells you what to do. And the reason why that's there over there and also over here is because if you change the contents of this screen over here on the right that I'm showing you right now, and let's say you go over to the music, then you still have your, uh, your directions right over here um, on the left-hand side in the center screen. So this is, this is great. It gives you a lot of information about what your, your next moves are. And it, the way I have this set is with a heads up display, meaning direction that I'm traveling, which I like. And then down here on the lower screen, it tells you the next stop here is that Wawa, 14.4 miles. Uh, that's, that's how far it is away. And, and I have the overview map set up down here. So it's really nice, very complimentary in terms of having the two different screens. And then if you do change, uh, let's say you go over to, to music over here up at the top screen, then you, you actually lose the bottom screen navigation as well, but you still have the navigation destination and uh, directions right over here in that screen. So with that, you know, it's it's really laid out very well. Let's make sure it's accurate and it takes me to the Wawa so I get some juice and uh, yeah. Okay, so as we're about to pull into our last charging stop for this trip, uh, we are in, where are we? I don't know, Wilmington, Delaware, I guess, at a Wawa, about to go to a Wawa. I've been here before. What's cool about this place, if I remember correctly, is not only is there an Electrify America charging station, but there's also Tesla here as well. I remember actually commenting about how soon we're going to be able to take CCS cars and charge at this at a Tesla station. Little did we know there'd only be, you know, at this point in time, 12 no, places to do that left. at the Magic Docks. And this is not one of them, by the way. Um, so, yeah, here we are. Let's let's get in there and charge up our last session. I wonder what kind of units these now are. Turn left and then turn left. Can I get one good last charging session? Now turn left and then you will reach your way. Not asking for much. Yeah, there's Tesla over there, the Wawa over there, and it looks like we've got a Hyper 350 here on the end. This looks like a this looks like a newer unit here. Uh, these are all 350s. Oh, man, this could be good. This could be good. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, uh, you know what? I forgot the precondition coming here. Oh, man. See, that's one of the problems when you don't... I have the destination tied into the navigation, and you have to manually go in in this car and turn on uh, preconditioning, whereas in a Tesla... If you put in the navigation where you're going, it automatically preconditions. So I think we need to get that a little bit more refined, Lucid. That would be a strong suggestion of mine because here I am, you know, what, what temperature is out? 62 degrees out. There's no way my battery is up to optimal, optimal temperature. I've only driven 49 miles. Having said that, we've got a new unit over here. I figured out, I don't know, these are the BTCs. I got to figure out what they are. We'll check it out. But it'd be nice to be able to uh, add automatic preconditioning based on navigation settings. That's one one small request I have, Lucid. Yeah, so these are the new SK Signet units, and it's a good installation here. No one's here. We've got all 350s except for the one down at the end, which is, the again, leaving the older unit in there. I think that's um, one of the older Signets, which is the Chatamo and the CCS. But we've got, we've got a total of five... 350s here. This is this is the way to do it, uh, in my opinion, Electrify America. So let's go ahead and do our last plug-in. I didn't really pull up that close here. Let's see if this cable will reach. I mean, this is what Tesla needs to do. Look at this. This is a nice installation with a long cable. That's what they need to do on those V4s. You don't need to have it all coiled up inside the unit. Just put it, I like this install. All right, so 
let's go ahead and open this uh, unit right here. Um, plug and charge has not failed me yet, so please don't do that today. And I got to do the leg technique here. We'll step over. And in we go. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Connecting to the vehicle. Again, remember, I did not precondition here. So let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Credit card mobile pay reader currently unavailable. That's interesting. Maybe, uh, I don't know if that's on every unit, but this one here says it's got an issue. At least they're communicating that. I don't think that's telling me that I have an issue, do I? Preparing the charge. Let's get in here and see what happens. Oh, look at this. Authenticate via the charging station or mobile app. So this is an issue. Wow, this is the first time I've had a problem with plug and charge. All right. Well, I'm going to get out, fix this. I'm going to actually move to another unit. We're going to charge one more time. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to open the charging port from, from the inside here. Let's do it. All right. Oh, actually, I just closed it. So let's open it one more time. Come on. There we go. All right. And hopefully this works. Wow, it's windy out here today. Leg technique. Here we go. We're in. Let's see what happens. Connecting to the vehicle. Processing payment. Payment authorized. All right, good. So, yeah, it was just it was just that one unit. Uh, for whatever reason, that credit card reader, it said credit card reader is not working. That impacted my ability to actually do plug and charge, which makes no sense to me because I'm not using a credit card. But whatever. All right, now, welcome driver. Preparing to charge. I've been timing the... Uh, Actually, I should go back and, and look at this, but I think it's around 45 seconds to a minute before I start charging. Again, I did not precondition. Let's see what kind of a charge we get here. Looks like it's ramping up nicely. Two twenty-two I saw there. Again, we're at a 12% state of charge. Now it's ramped down to 194. And, and, you know, even though it's 65 degrees out, this battery sat overnight and it's not super warm. So as it starts to heat up, let's see if we increase speed. We'll be back. All right, so here we are at 16%. Now, one would think that the car, if the battery was cold or if it felt like it could, should be warmer... It would, you would think that the thermal management would kick on. And this car is dead silent right now. There, it's not doing anything. It's just taking, it's just taking the energy, but it's not trying to warm up or cool down the battery pack in any way. I, I can hear it. It's just quiet. So it's ramped down to 182. I'm going to keep watching it here. All right. So I was just talking to Kyle and he explained that if the battery pack was, was cool, that it would not kick on the thermal management and it would uh this the car would know that the energy that's being consumed is what's going to heat up the battery pack and in fact that's what happened here i saw i saw that um we've been at basically 183 187 kilowatts since about 18 percent state of charge and at at 26 percent state of charge uh, the thermal management system in the car just kicked on, which means that it's trying to keep it, I guess, cool now. Um, we're pulling a very straight, linear um, 180, 185 kilowatts, and now we're at 30%. So I wish I had, I wish I had preconditioned before I got here because these units now, thermal management just kicked off, kicked down. Now the fans have kicked on, 
and it's starting to taper. Yeah, look, it's, I'll take this 178, 181 kilowatts. Not, not bad. We've already received a hundred, a hundred miles of range in seven minutes. So that's, that's pretty good. All right. At 20 minutes, we pulled 56 kilowatt hours, total of 240 miles. So at the 20 minute mark, we've pulled 240 miles of range. Car currently says it's got 291 miles total range at a 56% state of charge. Okay, 75% state of charge, still pulling 92 kilowatts. I've added 342 miles, and this is 33 minutes into the charge, a total of 81.2 kilowatt hours delivered. Uh, let's see what kind of range we have on the car. Distance, 393 miles. So that's it. That was our that was our last charging session, and uh, we are now pulling away from. Uh, we're now pulling away from Electrify America here in Wilmington, Delaware, and let's see where we're going to go. Navigation. Search. We're going to go to Far Hills, New Jersey. Go. All right. So the, road. the reason I'm going to Far Hills, New Jersey is because Kyle flew in. Uh, he's over at Timon's parents' house. And we are, I'm going to be, I'm going to be swapping out cars. This car is not going to make it all the way back to Darien, Connecticut. But rather, I'm going to meet him there where he picked up my Model 3 yesterday. So Kyle's going to be going on a nice leisurely trip, sightseeing tour across the country with some buddies of his. Um, and he's going to have my car out in Colorado. I should say our car because uh, this is sort of, yeah, it's my car. But <laughs> it's the out-of-spec mobile. But he's going to be keeping it out in Colorado after driving it for a while and be running it through the hogback challenge and i don't know when i'm going to get my car back but um i'm sort of sad because i'm going to miss it um you know this has been it's been a an amazing experience to really have my dream come true to finally be able to get one of these lucids mile turn left the way with which I was able to purchase this car, pre-owned, um, saving for me a lot of money and getting the trim that I really wanted with the with the long range was very important to me. Um, the comfort, this is the best car I've ever owned. There is no doubt in my mind. Um, the charging is something that is very frustrating to me. However, I don't think it's a reason for me to sell the car there may be other reasons but that alone is not like oh wow forget it you know there's uh, you, you kind of for me I, it's a it's a bit of a challenge i kind of work around it um but it, it's definitely frustrating and there's a lot of room for improvement here but we put the charging aside this is just an amazing amazing car um i'm just grown accustomed to it it, fe it feels Everything just feels right to me. The buttons, I've gotten to know them super well. Um, the placement of everything. I, I, I haven't hit my head once. I'm 6'5". Maybe I've developed the limbo technique of getting in and out of this. The A-pillar, it is it is pretty low. But, um, you know, it bothers my buddy Rob. He, he wouldn't buy the car because of the A-pillar. But, you know, to me, it's not that bad. I, I kind of, I sit back a lot further. He's not as tall as I am. So I think if I were to sit up here, it would bother me a little bit more. But anyway, we're going to continue the drive out to Far Hills, New Jersey. And this should be um, an interesting last ride. Kind of a sentimental one. Statistically, we have actually driven this car since a couple of days ago. 1,350 miles, and let's see, we're going to get over the 
We're going to go over the Delaware Memorial Bridge here, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, New Jersey Turnpike. You know, the car since new, this car has 4,746 miles on it. And I bought it about a month ago with 890 miles on it. And so we're, we're using this car. That's for sure. So, all right. Now on to the Delaware Memorial Bridge heading into New Jersey. Boy, I don't know. I'm starting to feel sad that Kyle's taking my car. <laughs> oh, I hope I see it back. I hope I see it back. All right, guys, I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna wish you the best of luck. Uh, time it. Kyle, good luck to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, Appreciate you uh, letting us do this with your car. Yeah. And yeah. Helping us out to get everything sorted. Yeah. And it up here. And I'm expecting all of you to become lucid fast. So after just driving this car from Connecticut to Florida, and then from Florida all the way back up here to New Jersey, now it's gonna run from New York City all the way out to LA, uh, across the country. And, and then back over to Denver and spend a lot of time in Denver. So I wish these guys the best of luck in uh, their road trip and um, a lot of safety, a lot of fun, a lot of videos, and yeah, more to follow. So thanks again for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave, and we'll make sure that uh, we'll keep you updated on all the events that are happening. Take care now. Bye-bye.